Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. On this week's episode, we're going to be diving deep into the rabbit hole and really looking at what it means to be truly awakened. That's coming up next. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. My name is Logan Hart. And I'm Brian Easterday. And this is the Wizard Factory video podcast, where you subscribe to weekly videos, exploring deeper understanding of the universe and yourselves. If you're new to this channel and you're, it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button, like the video to help support it, and let's get into it. So we're talking about the rabbit hole. The, the awakening process, you know, or, or just being awake or being woke, right? What, these words are getting thrown around a lot these days. And as usual here at the Wizard Factory, we like to kind of give our own little take on things and how they're playing out and uh, generally approaching and in diving into those nuances that are often left out in people's sort of belligerent black and white, all or nothing type of thinking. So that's what we're going to get into here today. And I wanted to actually start off with a quote that came to mind as we were brainstorming. Um, I, I believe that it's from an actual Eastern text, but I first heard it as it was featured in a film called Inner Worlds, Outer Worlds, which is a really amazing, like mind stretching type of documentary. And this, the quote goes like this. There are innumerable sentient beings in the universe. I vow to help them all awaken. My imperfections are inexhaustible. I vow to overcome them all. The Dharma is unknowable. I vow to know it. The way of awakening is unattainable. I vow to attain it. And that quote really sort of highlights and features this sort of paradoxical idea that we're going to unpack here in in that you know it, it's sort of embracing that paradox that duality and, and and finding a way to sort of reconcile them yeah and you know even within that you know quote we we could kind of like look at that and and break things down with them but really the main thing i i, I like i would want to pull from it would essentially be the what you're hitting on it, it's the the awakening process very much is about like reconciling these paradoxes in the universe so for example like the masculine and the feminine you know they seem like very opposite but like to truly understand them you have to reconcile them together like you have to be able to unite them so you know there and you can see this with a lot of different themes like um one of the things i talk about here on like this complicated simplicity like they would seem like very, you know, like very contradictory things, but you can, you can see that both elements exist. So it, it's being able to see all the different elements of like in the universe of creation and how they really work together, you know, that they're all really part of the same system and that they, they're each playing their own role, just like each of us is playing our own role, uh, you know, and, and honing in on that. And, you know, there's, I think there's very much there's different levels of awakening and awareness. It's not just this black and white light switch. It, it very much is is a gradient because and you can understand that by looking at like what are some of the found the foundational like assumptions that what the universe is doing like at a foundational level like we're experiencing ourselves so we can learn about ourselves right so that you know th there's always more to learn like there's always always more to experience there's always another perspective to look at so you you can see that when you when you understand that that the whole the entire purpose is to learn and continue to learn and then that doesn't stop you can really understand that that awakening process like it's a recognition of how that works like on a fundamental level and that you that learning doesn't ever stop education doesn't ever stop like there's always more depth uh, to dig into there's there's always more to discover you know and that and that's really you know one of the very fundamental 
things I think you have to understand as, you know, as part of the waking process is understanding the, the foundational purpose of like w- why we're existing, like why everything is working the way it is. It's to experience and to learn and to grow and expand our consciousness, like both as like as individuals and then like, and then to feed that experience back into source consciousness. Exactly. And what is consciousness? You know, let's take it to the very fundamental levels. You know, that's like the the primordial deepest of the deepest in terms of knowledge and understanding, like the meaning of everything really um, is like, think about that. What is consciousness? First of all, it's already kind of assuming there's a dualistic uh, aspect to it because there's consciousness but in order for that to be consciousness, there has to be something to be conscious of. So then there's, you have the subject and the object, you know, and, and that's the ever going interplay between all things, all beings and just objects, you know, uh, out there in, in the universe. Ultimately, everything has some level of consciousness from a rock to ascended master everything has a certain degree of consciousness. You can put labels like very asleep, the person's asleep or they're not woke or whatever. And, and there's a, a layer of truth. I can see where that language is coming from. It's, it's kind of just suggesting a general, general idea about that. But there is no asleep and awake. And there's, there's, in other words, there's no just line that you cross. You could even look at like, what does it mean to be an adult? You know, is there one day you just wake up and suddenly, oh, I'm an adult now, so I can do adulty things? No, it's like even, even the line between, you know, teenager and then like young adult and then, but does it even stop there? Like you continue to mature, hopefully, throughout the, the course of your entire lifetime. So in that same way, awakening is that same exact thing you really wake up when you first, you know, like enter the world. Well, I mean, but, but aren't you somewhat aware, even when you're in the womb before you're even born, you know, your consciousness is there hearing the sloshing of the amniotic fluid and, you know, all these things. So like it, it, it literally is just an ongoing process. And that's one of the main first primary concepts that we're trying to convey is that it's not like you said, Brian, it's not a light switch. It's a dimmer knob. And it, it can always go brighter and brighter. And, and that's one of the hallmarks of the black and white thinking is binary. It's, it's this or this. Whereas when you're looking in gradients, there's a way more limitless quality to everything because there's only that point of origin, but the gradient doesn't, there's no end to it. Like mm-hmm. think about hot, hot and cold. Well, there's, when we say hot and cold, we're talking about what feels hot and cold to our bodies. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there's like that coldest point that you can't get any colder, but you can always get hotter, right? So there's that point of origin, and then there's, there's unlimited potential within that spectrum. But mm-hmm. even so, the, na- the, the laws of nature still kind of limit, like, you know what I mean, in terms of like age, for example. Like you can continue to mature, but then at the same time, there's a law and laws in effect that means you're going to die someday like you you can't just continue to mature forever you know Mm -hmm. things like that yeah i I think the dimmer knob is a a really good way to look at it and and that's an excellent point about it when you have that gradient as compared to just this black and white very you know very binary kind of thinking there is a lot a lot more room for different expression you know uh, imagine if the world was like literally like only black and white, like it would be just like how, how boring would it be? Like it's the color, it's the variety that makes things like really beautiful. Um, you know, so, so we can see, see that same thing. Like, you know, if that's, that's any physical form is an expression of consciousness in some way. So if we can see that like color and variety, like makes, makes things beautiful, you know, it, the experience of consciousness is a lot more beautiful when you understand that it, it works on this gradient it also allows you to step out of that black and white thinking, that kind of binary thinking where it has to be this or that. And you can see things as both. You can see the nuance in things 
which really is a, a key to being like aware. Like you can look at uh, many cults, you know, they think they have like some very secret knowledge that like everybody should have. And they, they really feel like they know everything, but they're, they're always stuck in this black and white, like dualistic thinking of like, Oh, you're either with us or you're against us or, you know what I mean? Like it's you, like black and white thinking really is like the death of awareness. It, it, it really is. And it's not to say that there aren't like extremes that like exist, but even within, within that, like there's a gradient, like hot and cold, like, well, where does hot begin and cold end? It's, it's a gradient, you know, and a lot of that stuff is very subjective. What might be hot to one person might not be that hot to another person. Like, so, you know, it, it you with being a, like awareness, the, the awakening process is about expanding your awareness, being able to see the nuance of things, see all the different pieces of the puzzle, both as individual pieces of the puzzle, but also how they operate from creating the picture of the whole. Like that, that is the reality that we experience. Yeah. And, and like, we've kind of been covering this, this idea in general with things like our healing episode is, is same, the same kind of idea. It's not like, okay, I'm healed now. Okay. I, I'm awake. I get it. Like it, you, you keep going it, you commit to the lifelong endeavor. It's never ending. You know, mm -hmm. like, like the quote says, I vow to attain it. You know, that's them some serious words right there, you know? So, and then also like, I feel like, the moment that a person stops being a student themselves, they lose their validity or credential as a teacher. They kind of lose their right to teach other people things if they're not continuing to take in knowledge and, and stay a student themselves, because that's kind of like that false ego paradigm of hierarchy where, okay, I'm up here, I'm the teacher, you're the student, so you're just going to sit there and shut up and listen to everything I say and memorize and repeat that's that authoritarian kind of teaching that we're taught in schools. But that's, that's bullshit. In reality, everybody's a student and a teacher simultaneously, whether they even realize it or not, because mm -hmm. you're interacting, you're, you, you exist and I exist. And so we literally can observe each other and to whatever degree that you're paying attention or your level of awareness, this is where the whole wokeness thing is really coming in. You're talking about, consciousness, awareness, it's like seeing things, but also it's not, you know, like, is a camera really conscious or is it just seeing what's there and showing you what's there? There's no, it's, it's not experiencing anything. It's not tasting the food that you're taking a picture of to post on Instagram. That That's what your senses are, you know, your tongue, all your nerves, like that's, that's an essential part of this human experience. We're not just these computers like taking in data and processing it. It's, it's like being a part of, of it all too, not just being this observer all the time. It's, it's both. It's that duality reconciled. And that's what we're getting at. It's like part of the awakening is you're getting better at reconciling all of those paradoxes meanwhile, everyone else is out there polarized as fuck and just totally in one one side or the other right and you can see that play out in a lot of ways whether that's in like the political spectrum or you can even see it with uh black and white thinking in like religious philosophies there's you know philosophies like the, the abrahamics they even even the more esoteric abrahamic philosophies very much have this idea that you know like the physical reality is like a prison and that you know spirituality is something that's like beyond this world that it takes place in other dimensions and other timelines or you know what you know it's just something outside beyond the physical reality and that this that this physical reality isn't somehow just as spiritual you know so and and i i think that's you know definitely what you're you're hitting on with that the point that you brought up that it's it's not just about being like aware of other things but it's about being here like in, in this experience like your soul wouldn't have bothered to come here over and over and over again to have all these experiences to learn if there wasn't something to have. Like there's, this is a, this physical body, like this experience, whether it's, even if it's like simple things, like you mentioned, like the, the enjoyment of eating like wonderful food, like that's a very, that's a spiritual experience, you know, and this idea that spirituality is only this thing that like, you know, monks or gurus do if they go out to like to the mountains and the woods by themselves or they live in an ashram or they devote their you know like that's a form of it but it's it's by far from the only kind 
you know, just living life, just enjoying the experience and learning lessons, bettering yourself, like understanding cosmic law and not violating other people and letting them have that experience as well. It's a spiritual experience, it's, you know, and there, mm-hmm. there's such a, like you mentioned, it's this, it's this gradient, just like with the awakening process, the kinds of experiences we have, there's a huge gradient of experiences that we can have, but it's some of them very, very difficult and challenging. Others of them very rewarding, you know, and they make you feel like they, you really come alive. Um, but it's, you know, they're all spiritual. Like they all serve their purpose. The purpose of awakening. Taking exactly. It back full circle. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, speaking of full circle, you know, it, it progress and growth and awakening isn't a linear process either. It's not like you're just, mm-hmm. okay, I'm going from dim to bright. It, it's all over the place and it's spiraling. I'm actually thinking of um, what is that thing called? The uh, the orrery uh, in Agra's chamber in the dark crystal uh, showing the astrology because mm-hmm. there's there's the correspondence as above, so below. It's, oh, it's, it's literally a visual. <laughs> it's a visual like representation of all of the different cycles that are happening in your life that there's some little tiny ones that's happening daily and it's just going like this all over the place. And then there's these gigantic circles that take 30 years to come back around. But, but by the time it comes full circle, you're a different person. So that's why we're saying spirals because everything is the same in a different way. You're going to return back to the same place, but in a different way. And you'll have new experiences to, to go off of via the, the trivium process, you've taken in new information and therefore your behavioral output is going to be of a higher degree, higher quality. That's mm-hmm. awakening. Mm-hmm. Awakening, not awakened. No, I, I like that you, you brought up that example from the dark crystal. And, and if you guys haven't seen our, our breakdown of those, uh, you know, go check those out. But yeah, astrology is a wonderful example to observe this. If, if you're looking at in the center of our galaxy, you know, there's a massive black hole, right? And this is what's creating like the gravitational force that it, like it's, it's pulling all the planets. And, and if you look at it, like every, it's, it's all like a spiral, right? Everything's moving. And each of the planetary bodies have like their own, like tiny cycles within their cycles. And, and you can think of this like gears in a machine or in a watch, right? Like, this is how this is how consciousness is working. All these little parts are interacting together in their own little ways and having different effects, and it's constantly moving. It's constantly rotating. It's constantly changing, right? That's a fundamental thing you should understand that, like, oh, that change, that you should constantly be changing. You should constantly be evolving. But you can see that, you know, like, like I said, our entire galaxy, uh, everything is being, like, rotated around this, this center point, this void. You know, that is like the root source. Like I was studying about the Mula Nakshatra uh, this morning, and the Mula Nakshatra is all about the roots and things, but it, it's, it's uh, the, one of the, the constellations that is, is closest to our galactic center. You know, so it's all about returning to the source. And, and we, when we can see through the law of correspondence, like, you know, all the planets, all the stars, all of that is inside you as well. Like all those energies, they're all present, and, and we're, we're made you know, made from a combination of all these all in our own unique way, but it, it's all emanating from this same source, from that same center, and everything's revolving around it. It's constantly shifting. It's constantly spinning. Um, so that, that's a really, you know, a really good way to observe that when you're going through these lessons, you know, as you keep spinning around, you're coming back closer and closer to the center, you know, it's very much like this spiral Mm-hmm. you know kind of process that like you said every time you come back to it you're coming back to it from with more experiences with more knowledge that the last time you went through that experience you may not have had this piece of knowledge that the next time you come to it it allows you to make a better decision because you have that knowledge you have that information now so it's this constant you know you you have the same cycles in your life and that's and you can see that it's like the planets they move around your chart like you mentioned 30 years well that's saturn Saturn takes 30 years to get around the chart. So you, you can see that there are a lot sh- shorter cycles, like the sun, you know, he, ri- come, he rises and he sets every day, right? But then, you know, there's the, those outer planets that they take a lot longer and they have the, the longer themes in our life. So, you know, astrology is a very beautiful tool for being able to understand, like, how, how consciousness actually works. It, it literally gives you the map of, of how consciousness is working and interacting at all times.
Mm -hmm. And isn't it interesting that Jehovah and Christianity is, it's all this light uh, symbolism and God is light and all this kind of stuff, but isn't it the dark matter and the, the black holes that is actually like moving the entire fucking universe. Where's yep. this hand of, where's the, the finger of God that's made of light. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just kind of an interesting observation like this. Oh, it's dark sided, you know, uh, fear of the dark sort of thing. You know, that's, that's what children have. They have fear of the dark. So it's time to grow up, you know, turn the night light off and yeah. And then another thing too, is that when you were talking about the, the spiraling, I had this image of like you have this giant bowl of like water or something and you're stirring it. So there's that sort of spiral vortex going. You're, you're creating that motion, that, that ever going flux. And then say like living life and having different experiences is kind of like you're pouring different stuff, like a bit of syrup and some OJ and milk and, you know, different things into your bowl while you're stirring it. And all those experiences are then becoming like a part of your consciousness. That water, you know, sort of uh, representing your consciousness. And then what's it also going to do uh, when you're adding stuff, you're, you're adding to it. So it's expanding, it's growing. And then you're incorporating all of those different things that you added. That's the point here is for the most part, you choose your experience. Yes, other people have their own free will and they can choose to do things to you that you may not have wanted or planned on or, or whatever. But for the most part, you can choose your experience. And, and even if that bad thing happened in some kind of roundabout way, you still chose to be there at that place at that time when that occurred. And maybe you intended on that before you even incarnated. We don't, you know, it's, you, you can't argue one way or another. And of course that, that doesn't excuse like c consent that's happening in the, this physical reality that still trumps everything. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was just kind of an interesting little uh, kind of imagery that popped in my head. Yeah. So that, that's really looking at awakening through consciousness, but I, I think there's, and this is where I think a lot of confusion comes in. And, and this is a concept I've been thinking about for a few years here is that there's, you can kind of observe different types of awakening in regards to like there's a a political awakening uh and then there's like a a spiritual awakening you know and one is like awakening to the world you know and, and how things are operating you know for example like that you know government is illegitimate or you know like you're, you're learning about all those things that maybe aren't as pleasant to, like to learn about um but then there's the part like of awakening to yourself and I think in our society, you know, where you see a lot of the people throwing around the term woke or, or telling, calling other people sheep and things like that, they very much are in the process of, just keep in mind, neither of these are black and white. They're all a process. They're very much in the process of like the political awakening or waking up to the world. Like they're saying, okay, so the financial system's rigged. Oh, we're all, you know, we all get extorted by like these thugs that are just, you know, manipulating everybody for the, for their own benefit you know you you can you can see these things you start learning about like certain conspiracies or, or what you know whatever it may be you start getting interested in those kind of things and a lot of people if they they go down that road without also having the awakening of the self going on at the same time like in regards to like tapping into uh, the spiritual realm and like the the psyche and things like that, like cosmic law, you'll notice that they will they'll almost spin out of control. Like they'll they'll become you'll see people they become very obsessed with conspiracies. Like the next it, it's all about just that next big fix because every time they find out some new conspiracy, there's a chem, there's chemicals released in their brain, you know, and then they get it they get addicted to that. Like you know, and that's why they're always looking for like the next rabbit hole. Or, or whatever that is, but they never spend any time, you know, they're always pointing outwards, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, you see this, you see this, but there's never any like observation inwards, right? So that's a sign that there's an awakening to the world going on, but it's not being balanced out with that awakening from within, where you're learning about your own psyche, like you're delving into your own traumas, and you're like, okay, so, you know, if say you wake up to the political awakening, there's, you see that these things are going on, well, if you realize that you've been manipulated, you need to start understanding your own consciousness so you can find those points of like why and how you were manipulated. So you can start 
undoing those. So you, you really need to delve into cosmic law, delve into your own psyche and these kinds of things at, to balance out that knowledge of the world. Because there's, a, you know, like, for example, like with child trafficking, there's a lot of very terrible information to find out there, you know, stuff that just really fucking shocks you. But it's, it's important to know about those things. We're not saying don't look at them, but you, if you're not balancing that out with being able to also see the beauty in things and like your own experience and still be able to like have your joy and your happiness in life, you can get so lost in it, you know, that that's all you think about. And then the world just becomes a very dark place. And then you become very angry because you're like, oh, there's these evil people control. And you know, everybody's just stupid fucking cheap and nobody's getting what I'm saying and nobody's hearing what I'm saying and you get this this state of like spiritual blue balls or this like frustration that we've talked about, you know, like that that comes if you don't have that that personal awakening, that personal experience, you know, where you're you're getting the woe gas and you're having the the ecstasy of just enjoying the experience and understanding that even if there are difficult things, those things if you look at them from a, a larger perspective of a, you step back, you can see that these things are catalysts for growth. Like right, the fact that the political system pulls so much bullshit right now has a good deal to do with how many people are realizing that it's fundamentally bullshit because it's becoming so obvious that you can't ignore it anymore. Like so, you know, there's different types of learning, you know, and this is part of the waking process: understanding that there's there's learning through doing something and seeing it go correct you know it works but there's also a very important type of learning the apophatic process that you you were learning things by like well i did that and it did not work and sometimes that to get a lot of people motivated it takes something that is just very it just gets so bad that we can't ignore it anymore and then people then have to start looking inward because like that's where the answers really lie we're like okay so all this is it's like something we do intuitively almost like when it gets so bad on the outside, it's like, why is it? And it's because deep down on some level, we all understand cosmic law. We all understand that, that we like, we can be a causal point for that. So we have to start like changing how we are fundamentally viewing ourselves and the world and what our purpose is here. And then we'll start changing not only our actions in the outer world, but, but how we're interpreting what we're seeing, you know, like one person could see, you know, the government locking down and controlling people and doing all that as like a, a, a terrible thing. And then kind of get in a very fear-based mindset or a victimhood mindset. You know, uh, if you look at it from a higher perspective, you can see that like, yep, they're, they're poking the bear still. They're, they're going to keep overstepping the bounds. And the more they do that, the more people will have awareness of what they really are. And awareness is, creates choice, you know, mm-hmm. so that, and that, so you know, everything plays its role. For sure. And I mean, that you're kind of reminding me of my own awakening process, and it very much kind of goes in in like a stair-step fashion from those sort of lower truths to the to higher understandings. And we're going to get more into kind of that concept in a little bit. But like I was raised Christian, and then so my first awakening was like science. Like, okay, science has been ignored by Christians. It disproves all religion and anything spiritual is bullshit. And like, I completely flopped all the way to the other side. But then I started like looking at quantum physics and things like that, that sort of started kind of, there's, there's the the fringes of spirituality there in the, in the, uh, within the science field. And then the next big red pill was the kind of the conspiracy thing. So ironically, it was mostly like nine 11, and uh, like the Federal Reserve scam, those were the, some of the first big uh, doses of truth that I took in, in in that domain of like this conspiracy stuff where mm-hmm. that that was really like a major catalyst in my awakening. So even though they were these very dark, nefarious, evil things, they were propelling my consciousness to higher truths, to higher understandings about the way the world really works both accepting the the beautiful parts and the ugly parts, you know? And so from like, from that, I definitely very much got stuck in the mindset that we're talking about where everything's a conspiracy, uh, very poor discernment about which ones are legit and which ones aren't. And that, that evangelical frantic, like, Oh, we got to wake everybody up like right now. And, you know, and like you said, like calling everybody sheep, if they, 
don't want to hear what you have to say. And it, it, it's just, it's like watching a child make the same mistakes you've already been through. Like, you know, you want to help them, but then they are where they are. Like, that's just where they are. They're, most people are, sadly, in, still in their infancy of awakening, if, if even begun the process at all. It, you mm -hmm. know, and so, yeah, from, from there, I was looking into, okay, well, the, the conspiracy stuff leads to the occult because they're all Satanists and they, they all practice the occult. But what is the occult? And so the more I started digging into that, the more I was realizing that even people that say they're woke and they're talking about all these conspiracies, well, if you're still talking about the occult like it's just Satanism and that's all it is, yeah. then you're not fully woke then, are you? Like, there's, it, it, that's, what, that's the point. It's like, well, I'm woke, I'm woke. But then there's always this next thing that kind of like should put you on your ass and make you feel like, oh, well, maybe I wasn't as woke as I was acting. And eventually, if you're really paying attention, you'll stop touting this word around so much. Like you'll, you'll stop feeling the need to say that, to give you that feeling of superiority. Like, well, I'm woke and they're sheep and therefore blah, blah, blah. You know, it's just ego games. It's, it's wasting your right. fucking time and it's keeping you distracted from true progress. Right. One, well, yeah, I, I like that you brought that up because it's, it's kind of a dualistic thing in the sense that they are trying to elevate themselves as well as tell everybody else how, like, dumb they are, right, mm -hmm. and, and put them down. So, you, like I said, it very much is like a, a mm -hmm. kind of like a, a narcissistic kind of ego thing. You know, like, like we mentioned, you know, we hit on that concept in, in our last episode that we talked about. And in my progress, um, or as far as, like, my spiritual path was very, very kind of similar to yours in the sense that, I was raised in a, a very Christian home and never, it never resonated with me. Even as like a young child, it just, it was, I knew it was off. It didn't make any sense. Like my logic would always question it. It's like, well, if this is true, then that, like, you know, it just, it doesn't line up if you start actually questioning, um, you know, it's a religion that you just have to have blind obedience for. So then that really led me to that scientific mindset like you spoke about like where i was like okay science is awesome and then i really kind of went to the other extreme just like you did with atheism because i had i had felt so much trauma through my childhood because of that exactly. abrahamic mindset you know being forced on me or you know you know my parents treating me like terribly because i didn't do what they wanted to in church you know and you know like things it's like, like that. the knee-jerk reaction it's the knee-jerk reaction that comes out of trauma. So then you go to the other extreme with that pendulum because you're, you're, you haven't learned how to balance. You know, you haven't, if you've only had one experience, going to the other side of the experience is part of that learning process because you, if you don't know where both ends are, you don't know where the middle is, mm, right? Yeah. So, so it's like this, you know, this, this awakening process is like this pendulum swinging where you're trying different things. And, and essentially what you're trying to work your way to is, is that to where that pendulum swim is, is the pendulum swing is mitigated. It's balanced. It's more more aligned with the center. Um, so there's not these extreme, you know, it's these like calibrating actions. Exactly, you're calibrating. You know, uh, you know, you're coming in alignment with your soul. You're calibrating your consciousness and, and getting in alignment with cosmic law and what your purpose is. You're getting on your dharma. Once you do that, you're staying on the path. You know, and then you're just fluxing between masculine and feminine, masculine and feminine as you need to. You know, which we'll we'll get into more later here. Um, you know, I so, actually had a little bit more on. Oh, on, sure. Yeah. By, by all means. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that. And then like, and I definitely think you, you kind of got into this as well, a little bit sidetracked with the kind of the new age stuff as well, Yeah. which is, which is really interesting because when you're looking at this sort of polarity split of the out there and the in here, you know, truthers and conspiracy people, they, they know a lot about all the, you know, the, the experiments and, you know, what year it happened and what the, all the false flags and, you know, all, all this data about what happened at such and such time in the external reality field, uh, but very little to no knowledge of self. Whereas new age people are almost the exact opposite. They sort of, they're like turning a blind eye to everything happening because they don't want to focus on the negative because that would be feeding it when actually uh, what feeds narcissists is y your, uh, your compliance, whether you're saying yes or you're just not saying no, just you ignoring them is basically giving them a fr the free pass to do whatever the hell they right. want. So that's bullshit. But 
new agers have a very good understanding of like the internal state there, you know, for, for better or worse, there's still some imbalances within like how they view the ego and things like that. But that whole uh, mindset is very much centered around self-awareness, you know, observe your breath, like uh, acknowledge these triggers when they come up and where's this coming from? Let me dig at the roots. I mean, that's shadow work. If, if we're mm -hmm. being honest, that's, that's very important. And it, it tends to not be a lot of in between, even people that it's like uh, conspiracy people know this and that about the facts of what happened. Uh, natural law people there, it's like a little closer because it's kind of diving into the spiritual domain, but it's still the out there. It's like the laws that are out there, but just as important as those dynamic behavioral laws are the psychological laws. And, and that's what I think know thyself truly means is if you understand psychology very well, not only do you understand yourself, but you understand universal human nature. That's why it's, it's not to say that every person is exactly the same. It's that if you understand all of the aspects of psychology, then all you need to do is get to know what kind of person am I dealing with. Once I've got you pegged, it's like dealing with the archetypes. Once you see what archetype you're dealing with, well, now you know how to deal with this person. You know what motivates them. You know how to handle different kinds of situations to, to get the best outcome. And that's really where the empowerment comes in. Your ability to navigate situations, to create the most positive outcome, that's, that's your power right there. So know thyself, know the universe, you know, the inner and outer world. You, you have to incorporate all of that and then connect the dots, see the correspondence. Like I was saying, when you're pouring stuff into the pot while you're stirring it, it doesn't just instantly turn the color that you, you know, that it turns like it, it has to bleed in. It has to like make its way through and mix through all of your consciousness, because that's, that's part of the awakening process too, is when you take in new truth that challenges the old belief system, you've got to knock all that shit down completely destroy it and rebuild it from the ground up. You have to reconnect all those neural connections in your brain to process that data with this new, you know, sort of axiom that you're operating from. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on my awakening process. So I, I very much went to that like atheism. And then, and then from that, I kind of first then found like Eastern philosophy, like Taoism was the one that I was really first drawn to. And then I looked into Buddhism and things and, it was like a few years there that I kind of just spent like on basic things like learning how to be happy, like, and, and normal things are learning to acknowledge like, Oh, when I had anger, I could try to like diffuse it or, you know, I could learn these spiritual lessons. So I was kind of doing the foundation, like the very foundational work, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I got to a point that, you know, I was at like a job that I was working, you know, as a, I was a manager at like a major hardware store. Then I was working like 60 or 70 hours a week. And, and I was just feeling very torn because I, I felt myself kind of slipping back into my old habits because I had made a lot of progress in becoming a, a happier person over those those years. And I kind of saw myself losing that as I was like at this job that I just didn't really like. And I I just felt very drained. I had no time to do any anything other than that. So I had no time for my spiritual progress. And keep note this, people, because this, this is why they keep you running running in the hamster wheel because you never yes. have time to think about yourself. Um, so I was feeling very torn. Like I literally felt like my soul, my soul was being torn into. That's how I would describe it. Uh, and I made the decision that like, no, I, I, I just want to like, I want to find my enlightenment, like wh whatever it is, like whatever that means, like I'm going to go find it. So then I decided to just quit that job and like go with my backpack, my dog and just like get dropped off in the mountains of California. I didn't even know where the fuck I was. I just picked a spot on the side of the road that looked cool. And I started hiking, you know, like it, it, it wasn't where I was or the specifics that mattered. I just had the goal of like wanting to, to awaken myself. And then through those adventures, I encountered people that had like new age beliefs that I kind of tested and played with for a little while, but it never, that it didn't really ever resonate with me, but it wasn't too long after that. Then I kind of, I had a, like a, a very extreme like spiritual like awakening like in an experience that like and it is one of those things that like it's it's one of the major points of your life like you just I, I i like i woke up the next day a different person and i saw things in a very very different way um and uh 
from there, it wasn't very long after that that I started to come across like the information of cosmic law, you know, uh, through like Mark's work and, and others and things like that. And then started looking more into like the kind of Western philosophies and things like that. And then seeing seeing how those were related to like what I've learned with the Eastern philosophies like Taoism and things and that, you know, and from there, I just I started really diving in like once. And and for me, that was a big catalyst. Like when I found cosmic law, like I, I found it and I knew I was like, oh, like this is it. Like this is this is where it's at because I could start seeing how it literally applied to to every single area of my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and then from there, it has just been a study like more and more into that. And then even within the the different traditions that I study, I, I always tie it back to cosmic law, you know, right. so foundational thing of the awakening process guys is un- understanding that cosmic law and not just being able to repeat it or to share a meme or to tell you know online and tell someone oh you don't know about this so you don't you know it, it, right being able to repeat them has nothing to do with understanding them and having integrated them into your life two very, very different, different things and the latter takes it's a process it takes time and and you have to fuck up along the way so you can yes. learn. Yeah, it actually struck me when you were saying like that there was the one one experience right before you you found, you know, Mark's work and, and others and all mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, it, it was a turning point. And I think that that's the thing we can identify that people experience one of those and they mm-hmm. think, oh, that's it. I'm woke now. But right. they don't understand yet that there you know yes those those big big ones it, it's going to only happen a few times in your life but even yeah. that it, it's like you know there's more there's more to yeah. learn there's more to grow from and so it, it's just a very immature like literally kind of a very childish way of thinking uh, oh this is it i'm you know i'm an adult now you know that kind of thing it's just kind of an interesting way to look at that and um yeah i mean as you can see, the real point here is that it's it's ongoing, much like the rabbit hole. It just keeps going, like into the darkness of the rabbit hole, the unknown, and and sort of you have to embody that fearlessness and that veracity for truth, for knowledge, for growth, uh, and and that's only going to come about if you're cultivating self love, self care, and self respect, essentially. Mm-hmm. And just think about it when you were talking earlier, Brian, about one of the first things that you sought out was just how to feel happiness, you know, and I thought, well, how many fucking anarchists and uh, truthers come off as happy to you? Right. That's telling you there's something amiss there. The foundational level is not there. Yeah. Like they're still missing very crucial aspects of the big picture. And and that's why. You know, we're not demonizing any one of, of these perspectives. It's that it, it's not the end all be all. And you got to keep growing to a more holistic viewpoint. Because, I mean, and that's, that's the other thing I was going to say is like, first of all, wokeness, wokeness is not measured by how many conspiracies you know about or believe in and this and that. And it damn sure ain't because you know about this one big thing, like flat earthers are one of the worst about this thinking that because they know the earth's flat now they're just woke and that that, that, that puts them in this whole other league above all the other stupid sheep it, again it's just these petty insignificant little games that the ego tries to play to give it some false sense of validity and superiority because it's literally compensating from the feeling of intrinsic powerlessness that is driving these types of behaviors it's like I said, it's just, it's not serving you. It's holding you back. Right. And, and like, you know, yeah. Uh, another thing that came to mind too was sort of that allegory of the, the wizard of Oz. I feel like truthers have a, a, a bad tendency to sort of, they, they get very aware of all these things happening in the world, but they still prop up the elite uh, on this, this, how all powerful pedestal basically Mm -hmm. like oh they have all total control and they they're spying on us they see and hear everything and you know uh when you when you truly are awakening more spiritually you will see this for the facade that it is much like in the wizard of oz like that big green fiery dude up there he's really there 
it, it's really there, but it's the fear that makes it work. See, the 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 old man behind the curtain, he created that thing. He controls that thing, much as, you know, yes, the elites do control the economy and the military and the police and all this shit. Like, they do have that control, but at the same time, they're still just a scared old man hiding behind the curtain. And that what really makes that wizard all-powerful Oz is that you fear him. And that's that's the thing that we're that they're missing. They're still trapped in this fear-based fear-based mindset of we're just a rat in a cage with no power and you know guinea pigs for for these sick fucks. But um, essentially, you know, it's like it's real, but it isn't. It, that's why it's an illusion. It's like a dream. In reality, he's just the scared man behind the curtain, and they want you to believe so badly that they are all powerful like gods. Because that's exactly what they aren't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's. I, I like that you were used the word illusion because it really is like, it, if you're staying focused on the conspiracies or you're or you're propping the elite up, you know, or even you know even think about calling them the the elite. You know, we're doing it here just for easy reference so people know what we're talking about. But I, I don't even really like using that term for them. For, you know, it's it's all this kind of like trying to prop them up and. That is an illusion because the the illusion that you're falling into is that you yourself aren't you know powerful enough to do that. Like you haven't awakened to your own power. You're still stuck in the illusion that you're powerless, that you're a victim, that you're a slave. Like th those are those are all like illusions. Like you you're not any of those things. Uh, you know, unless you ch unless you want to choose to step in. But even it's it's like we're. We're so powerful, we can make ourselves believe that we're powerless. You know, <laughs> I love like that. you know, it's like that. You know that I've talked about before, uh, and it, you know, that's really what I see happening when a lot of people they kind of get stuck in the, you know, the conspiracy side of things, or they they very much are in this victimhood mentality of like, oh, you know, there's all this going on, and we just have to expose it, and we have to stop. Like, if you really want to know how to stop, how to stop things like that go inward figure out how to like awaken yourself understand yourself how you operate because when you when you have that awareness you have choice you don't you know awareness creates choice and, and we're going to break this down a lot in this episode here um but as you like for example like with, with the example of like putting putting them up on a pedestal and thinking that you're powerless and you're just a slave right well if that's the awareness that you're operating from it you you will admit your choice right? You're so just a slave and they're all powerful. What am I supposed to do? All of a sudden you wake into your own power, you, the awareness of who you really are, how you operate and how the universe op operates. Like they, they can't stop you. You've then created such an awareness that you have choice. You can step into free will and, and awareness and choice. Like th there's a reason th those are tied together. They're the, they're two fundamental things in the universe. Like, what are we doing? We're learning about ourselves. We're, we, we fractalize ourselves to have different experiences. And those different experiences come with what? As another fundamental thing, free will, the ability to make choice, because that is what allows you to have those different experiences and to learn. So the more awareness you have, the more choice you create for yourself. So when you mm -hmm. stop operating from a limited awareness that, oh, I'm a slave, oh, I'm powerless, oh, there's all these conspiracies and they cover it up and everybody's sheep and like, like not only am I, I as a human being powerless, but everybody else, they're sheep, they're stupid too. Well, yeah, you've just made everybody powerless and elevated and putting those people on the pedestal. So that's the reality. That's the reality that you experience. Like stop mm -hmm. fucking doing that and take your own power back. Like stop thinking of everybody else as stupid, like, like stupider than you are because you haven't like they, they haven't looked at a certain thing that you haven't you know like everybody has their gifts in their own areas like there's you know i'm 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 a great astrologer but you know what there's people that are like car mechanics that they know way more about a car than i do and then i want to have the first fucking clue you right. know so who's like weak and who's, who's uh, stupid exactly here? like we we all have our gifts and our talents and we need to stop calling other people sheep or like dismissing them in this and and i get like why that analogy there is that like the masses they do tend to act like sheep in, in a way that they they're easily manipulated and they're easily controlled but it's all because they've they haven't stepped into their own power and you don't help them doing you don't help them do that by like tearing them down 
or telling them how terrible they are or anything like that. You have to you have to show them how powerful they are. Those are two very, very different ways to go about that, like tearing someone down and criticizing them and awakening them to their own power and their own potential. Very different fucking things, and they produce very different outcomes. If you really want the world to wake up, you'll see that you have to start helping other people like awaken to the power that they have within themselves, not just tearing them down. Mm -hmm. Right, so you can see that there's sort of – it's that half-truth thing going on there where it's like you see where the allegory comes from the, the sheep thing, right you know but you you should it, it's not a useful place to be operating from it's not a useful awareness to be operating from and um so this kind of ties into that concept that i was playing with hinting at of this these higher and lower truths mm -hmm. even that it's it's a figure of speech Black and white thinking has you taking everything so super literally when you're missing the, the gist, the essence of what is actually being the, trying to be expressed, the intention of the person saying it. Obviously, we know that truth itself in the literal sense is all one thing. As soon as you separate it, that, you know, um, you, you're, you're dividing it. You're, you know, mm -hmm. truth is the all. It's synonymous with the all. But it's about perspectives. That's, again, why I was born me, Brian, you were born you, because we, now we get to see two different perspectives of the same truth. Right. And so this higher and lower truths is, is about your operating system as a conscious being, making choices and influencing reality and other, other beings around you. That's what's at play here is that it's the operating system that you're operating from. So in a way, you could look at like the predatory mindset. Well, in nature, it has its place. It has its usefulness and it has its role in the grand scheme of like the food chain and the circle of life and all that, even though there's higher truths that make that truth obsolete, that, oh, we can still survive. We can still have everything we want and also not have to, violate each other. We can respect and love each other and, and harmonize and cooperate instead of just eating each other. So right. what's true for the lion, even though, oh, dare I say this sounds like moral relativism, I'm not saying people can do this, but this is why human beings should not model their behavior off of a lion and what a lion does, because the lion doesn't even have the capacity to access the higher truths that we as human beings have the cognitive and biological capacity to understand and, and therefore operate from. This is so, so important, especially I think that kind of a, a, a large gap in the understanding of many people who follow Mark and, and you know, uh, are students of natural law. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and I, I like that you, you use that example because it's that very much how how it is like just like as every individual we've talked about you're operating from the foundational knowledge assumptions experiences that you have as well as like your unique personality and the way you interact with the world mm -hmm. you know and that's going to then change how you, how you do things like it, it but that's your foundational your ability to interact with the world well with a lion you know they're they're literally different physiologically like you you can see you know like and mm -hmm. keep in mind as i said earlier form is an expression of the energetic and spiritual qualities, right, that, yes. that are behind that. So with that line, yeah, in its, in its form, it has a totally different form. Its brain is wired totally differently. It, it doesn't even have the same parts of the brain does. So it has the, uh, you, you use the word capacity, and I like that. It has the capacity to operate within those physiological restraints or limitations that mm -hmm. it has. So for the lion, it's, you know, it only has the ability for so much awareness, so it only has the ability for so much choice. So when it when it sees like prey, it's the, the its choice that it has is to eat and continue to survive, you know, or to starve to death and die, right? right. That's it, that's its choice in the reality. Like that's that's where it is at. That's where its consciousness is operating from. That is totally fucking different from where we as people are operating. We can we have a different choice because we have the ability to have more awareness. Like th this, this phrase awareness creates choice. Like this is, this is what we're honing in on. This is what the awakening process is. This is understanding. This is what to be awake really is because you, you understand that as 
you awaken. As you gain more awareness, you have more choice. You have more opportunity. Um, if you become aware of how someone is feeling that you weren't aware of before, all of a sudden you have the opportunity to interact with them in a different way. Apply it to any situation you want. This is the essence of it. This is what it means. Yeah. This is like, one of those foundational concepts that we're laying down here. Um, right. For, for sure. It, it, absolutely crucial to understand. And like you were saying, like it's, it's biological truth, cognitive, you know, um, right. Mental capacities. We're talking about, like you, like you said, the lion is meant to eat meat. It cannot just suddenly one day decide to go vegan. It would die right. because it doesn't even have the organs to, br to, to break down the, the plant right. matter and extract the nutrients. So it's like, yeah, or the proper teeth or anything. Yeah. <laughs> but, but think about this. That's a product of its choices. Mm -hmm. Think about this. So it can't just choose to deviate from its evolutionary path because that's where it's been on. You can't just make mm -hmm. that drastic of a change and expect your body and your mind to be able to adapt to it. Because in the same way, we have been become domesticated. That's why when some people argue, well, anarchy couldn't work because if we just let everybody free all at once, it would be chaos. Well, I actually agree that it would be temporary chaos until that drastic change kind of leveled out and, and found its equilibrium in this new paradigm. This is how everything works. This is natural law. And so it's ironic that in a way they're actually kind of right when they say that. They're afraid to go through that dark night of the soul collectively mm -hmm. as a human species to get to that fucking freedom, to that real spiritual prize. And so it's like in the same way the lion can't just choose to eat meat, we can't deviate from our evolutionary trajectory because we, that's how domesticated we are. That's how mm. disempowered we are, that we can't just choose to go right for that. We as individuals are cultivating that when we are ready. But the average person, that's why in the matrix, you know, uh, Morpheus says, literally, if you try to wake some minds up, they, 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 loot, they go crazy because they can't handle it. They're too ingrained. They're too like codependent on the system. And so, yeah, it's just interesting kind of finding that parallel between like the lion and, the, and it's, it's mandatory diet for survival. And then how that plays into even like where we're at and, you know, and, and the subsequent choices that we're making as a species, just, I find that very interesting. Yeah. It, yeah. Again, it's, it's this very, that's a very interesting thing to to look at is the the evolutionary path and the choices like as a species and how that operates the collective and then influences the individual and then the in, the individual then reflects back into into the collective it's this back and forth that's always mm -hmm. always happening um but yeah it it definitely like i said it, it it's about that awareness and that and that's how you can kind of gauge consciousness and it's not that higher conscious like higher and lower does mm. is not the same as good and bad or better or worse like it's, it's not like it's it's very much like it's just one one has more awareness than other like uh, a, a small animal like you know uh, a rabbit or dog has more awareness than a rock or a plant and then you know we have a larger animal like maybe like an elephant or something has more awareness than that you know what i mean it, it right. builds and like there's it's this gradient it's not this black and white thing and like when people try to say plants feel pain and things like that, it's it's almost like they're trying to anthropomorphize it beyond its own actual awareness. Right. Uh, right. It's not that they're, oh, ouch, stop cutting me. They're literally just responding to stimuli. Okay, mm -hmm. there's a, a smaller, there's a tiny degree more consciousness there than, say, like a rock, because a rock right. does not respond to stimuli in that same kind of way. That doesn't mean that it's aware that it's being hurt and like sitting there like, oh, suffering, you know, the plant. It, mm -hmm. it's, it's not the same thing. And also, um, I was going to add in, yeah, the, the whole wokeness thing in general, it, well, it depends on what metric you're using subjectively to measure mm -hmm. that, that awareness. When you're judging someone else, you're judging their wokeness by your own standards. Your standards might not be the end all be all of what wokeness really is. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's, it's such a case by case basis and there's so many layers to it. So it's just, you know, what we're getting at is how kind of futile and meaningless 
those labels are in the way that they're being used. Uh, it's fine kind of in a general sense, but it's just gone way, you know, off the rails with it, in my opinion. Well, yeah, well and I've noticed even with term, terms like that, like wokeness or woke, like they, I, I like cringe when I hear those, honestly, because it, it, it's <laughs> like they're just overused and it's so, it's so misunderstood and it just, it's awareness that this is what it comes down to, you know, and awareness creates choice. Um, but another thing I want to like highlight here, and, and I'm only going to kind of briefly hit on this concept here because I'm, I'm really saving the breakdown of it for an, another episode that we're going to be doing on the, uh, on like, we're, we're going to be starting a series on like relationships and the play between the masculine and feminine here soon, where we're really going to be diving into these things deeply. Um, but, but I do want to hit on it here because it, it ties in and it's, it's a lesson I learned studying uh, charts recently and like, get, you know, studying more into astrology. And it's like, you know, who, who is the real guru is kind of how I like to frame it. So in astrology, we can see that, you know, the guru, the spirituality, like lessons, wisdom, th those are all things that uh, are associated with Jupiter. So Jupiter has a lot of qualities. He, one, you know, he expands things. Uh, he's also associated with like wealth, children. He, he's a protector. If you look at the planet Jupiter, it, it, it pulls things into its gravitational field that would otherwise, you know, smash and destroy our planet. Um, you know, so he, he's a protector like in the physical. Remember, the, the physical form is a reflection of the spiritual energetic qualities behind that. So, you know, so in studying Jupiter, I've been thinking, you know, and, and realizing that like one of the most spiritual roles, like the person that's like the real guru. It is your at your your average man that he he provides for his family you know because what does jupiter do he expands things so he he also creates so what you know you're you're creating children which is is one of the most spiritual experiences you could have because what is the universe doing it's fractalizing itself to learn about itself through reflections of itself that's exactly what's happening when you have children you fractalize yourself you've created you've expanded yourself that then you now have a reflection to observe, to learn more about yourself. That's why you learn so much and you change so much when you become a parent, right? So Jupiter, you know, that man, he protects, you know, his family. He provides, he expands abundance. Jupiter is associated with wealth. He expands wisdom, knowledge, the experience, all these things, you know. So a man that knows how to, to be a family man, that understands not only like how to be in the world, but understands like the cosmic law, the spiritual side of things, the higher wisdom, and can share that in a way with his family and with others that they understand that he expands their experience. He expands their awareness. He improves the abundance in their life and their quality of life. Batman is the real guru, more than the guru who goes off to an ashram and studies and hides himself away from the world. When you're doing that many times, you're trying to escape. When I tried to run off into the woods, uh, to go find myself, I was I was definitely running away from society. I didn't want anything to do with it. I was definitely trying to escape, but I was trying to escape into a place where I could find myself, mm -hmm. you know. And that's why, like, both of those paths are valid. But I think many times, you know, people who are, especially if they're in the the conspiracy side of the awakening, without the the spiritual side, they'll they'll call other people sheep. Oh, you're just an average person. You're not looking at any of this. When many times that man who is a father, even though he may not look into the occult or these things. He knows how to provide for his child. He knows when his child's upset, how to comfort them. He knows like what they enjoy, uh, how to fun, like what time to get them to bed, like how to provide that experience, like where he's facilitating the room and the sacred space that they can grow in. That's a spiritual man there. Like, and that, that experience shouldn't be discounted or thought of as less than, than someone who has spent their whole life studying into the occult or the esoteric philosophy they're all lessons and they're all beautiful and they're all valuable. So don't be so quick to dismiss someone's awareness or their experience just because it's not the same as yours. Like if they're learning lessons that are bettering their soul, that they're expanding their awareness, they're doing what they're supposed to as a soul. Like, and, and we don't have the right to stop anybody from doing that or to try to dismiss them because you don't think that because they're walking the same path as you, that they're on the wrong path. They're just taking a different route. Right. And it's interesting, too, to think how that kind of ties right back into what we were saying about being the student and the teacher. Where being Parenthood is the perfect, like, little example of that ongoing dynamic. It's like, you know, the, the, the cliche of 
sometimes I don't know if, you know, I raised them or they raised me, <laughs> you know, it's like, like you're, you're teaching them like how to literally not die and how to put food in their mouth and like these basic things. But then they're, they're teaching you so much about yourself, even though they're a child like that, that goes to show too, that you can learn from anything. It doesn't have to be from a person who's position, positioning themselves as a teacher or a guru. If you are in a person who's on that same path of growth and expansion and you're paying attention because you want to always gain that awareness, then you're looking for those lessons wherever they might be trying to show themselves to you, especially in the most unlikely or unexpected places. Right. So, yeah, to kind of tie everything together and recap here, when you dive down the rabbit hole, it's like you're, you're climbing that stairway to heaven, so to speak, towards higher truths. You're always striving for those higher truths. That's why the process never ends, because there's, there's always a higher perspective that you can gain even more the, of that bird's eye view. That's why they say bird's eye, because the higher you are, the more you can see the big picture and how all the things are playing out together, you know, like witnessing one little car crash versus zooming all the way out you're just seeing this whole city and like the clouds mm -hmm. going by it's it's like it's almost a more peaceful place too in, in an ironic kind of way so yeah always be striving for those higher truths that higher vantage point for which to observe things and therefore be more empowered in your choices well I, yeah i like it i like that you brought that up in that way um because it for me too, I also like looking at, it's kind of this irony that the deeper you go down the rabbit hole, the deeper you dive. Right. The, the higher, higher you go. You're sitting on exactly. the ladder. So it's, it's this law of correspondence at play, like the deeper you just like dig into roots. your own shadow and your own the awareness of the roots, the more you have the ability to see the top tree and see the holistic picture. It's like in the Norse tradition, we talk about the Yggdrasil, the world tree. This is, this is the tree of consciousness. So you have to, you have to understand those deep roots in order to understand those higher truths. You know, if right. you don't have that depth to support that, you know, imagine a tree with no roots, no depth to it. What happens when the first storm comes? It blows over. You know, you've got to you've got to go for that depth. And that then allows you to step into that kind of bird's eye perspective of being able to see things from a, a, a larger perspective, a kind of soul perspective. And, you know, over not just the perspective of a lifetime, but looking at all of consciousness, all of awareness and the, the development of, of source as a whole. Yes. Yeah. Beautifully said there. Man. And so to, to wrap up, that's, that's what we have for you this week. If you enjoyed this, please like the video to help boost it. And don't forget to subscribe and remember the tribe. Also for all things Wizard Factory, check out the wizardfactory.com. We offer our personal time and services and some uh, educational packages that we've put together as well. Check us out on all of the major platforms uh, for our audio version of the, the podcast. Mm -hmm. And we hope you enjoyed that. Uh, we always appreciate you. Um, comment below, let us know your thoughts. But until next week, be empowered, be inspired, and be encouraged. Mm -hmm.